What's up guys, it's Crash. And as you know, there was a massive info dump today as we expected, as I talked about on Sunday, I covered all the specialists and everything already. Now we got some uh, look at some gameplay from these new specialists, which is really cool. And almost more importantly, since we kind of already know what they do, we got to look at some of the maps that we haven't seen very much of yet. So what I want to do is go ahead and take a look through this trailer and see what we see together. And then we're going to take a look at something else that's very important. There's some alarming things in it too. <laughs> um, the battlefield beta uh recap where they talk about everything that they're working on we're going to go through that blog post together i've skimmed it so hopefully i won't waste a bunch of your guys' time but as always everything is time tagged down below so if you guys have seen this trailer a whole bunch and aren't interested and just want to uh talk about the beta feedback and stuff like that that will be time tagged down below for you for your convenience also, I, I want this to be a discussion, so I want to hear your guys' opinions down in the comments below. It doesn't sound like specialists are going anywhere. I know a lot of folks are frustrated. Um, my overall take on the specialist system is that it's something we're going to have to adapt to. It might end up playing well. Hopefully, it gets balanced and plays well. I understand some of your guys' concerns and frustrations with a little bit of limitations and flexibility having only one gadget. Hopefully, some of these specialists open that up a little bit. Um, I'm a little bit bummed about not able to have, you know, one single soldier. I love the customization that World War III is doing um, where you have one single soldier and then you can pick a class within that soldier, but you're still attached to that soldier. You can you can outfit them from head to toe, uh, change gloves, boots, everything, tattoos, face paint uh, to make them your own identifiable character. So I think that would be best case scenario, but that's not what's going to happen in this game. And either way, we're going to adapt and we're going to succeed. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's enough of that stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we see in this trailer. Uh, here's Navin Rao. <clears throat> He's like a recon class, cyber warfare suit, and the Trojan network. <clears throat> so when you hack a target and kill him, it shows enemies around, even wall hacks and stuff like that which is pretty cool. Now we'll find out later that the uh, UI has been updated and this build interestingly enough does not have the updated UI. This looks to be around the same time as the uh, as the beta build, but this looks like the kaleidoscope map. So I know a lot of times when I, when I personally first watched this through, I was looking at the specialist, but make sure to check out the maps because we're, we're getting some new looks at some maps that I think are pretty cool. He can hack enemy equipment and world objects i'm assuming that means when he hacks them that they become his or they disable them i couldn't tell let me know what you guys think if you could tell <clears throat> excuse me it looks like he hacked it and i'm not sure if that disables it or if that like if say if it's like a boris turret if he hacks it and it's now his turret i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure and here's dozer we've talked about talked about dozer the ballistic shield and blast resistance so he takes less damage and recovers faster from explosive damage uh we see the grenade indicators are back thank the lord uh we see those he stepped right on that thing it killed the guy next to him but didn't kill him so that's pretty dang strong and then we have the shield and again man you got another dozer right here it's just weird i get it i get the immersion factor but hopefully the game plays really well was he wait 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 was he shooting Oh, this looks like the 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 shield from uh unless what would be giving him hit markers? The shield from Black Ops 4, uh where you could stick a pistol through the hole and shoot. Yeah, he's shooting. He just got an enemy kill. Through his wow, so you can shoot as dozer, you can shoot through your shield, it appears. That's strong. That's gonna be frustrating. It's probably like from a gameplay standpoint, not that big a deal. But when you die to that, it's going to be extremely frustrating because there's nothing you can do. I was trying to see. Yeah, he has unlimited ammo in that. Thing. What? I'm confused a little bit. Does he have in this? I thought I saw he had a. Did he have a pistol? In his hand? What was that? Huh. I'm not sure. Oh, those might have been uh those might have been ricochets as well. Those might have been ricochets as well. So I'm not 100% sure on that. 
smart explosive and wingsuit these explosives look crazy sundance looks awesome she looks awesome yeah and this this is a really cool look at the renewal map for sure this i can't wait to play this map it looks awesome she went she got a little a little altitude at the end there on that that's pretty sweet this looks crazy the smart explosives are nuts man then there's anti-vehicle ones watch this thing it goes right to that chopper how much damage did that do that chopper was hurt we can see this stuff it was pretty hurt the chopper was down about 20 health but still that that is pretty wild that would be clutch whenever uh you get attacked by a vehicle like that um again things like that that like take out the skill like smart explosives i don't know if you guys played much titanfall but you remember the smart pistol that just aimed for you that causes some frustration again some of these gadgets i personally feel like aren't like insane or broken or anything they're just going to increase that frustration factor a little bit when you die to it it's going to be a, a little silly she has the emg x scanner and threat perception automatically spot enemies who deal damage so if you get shot insta flick get turned on that's all you're going to be doing easy that's a new shotgun that's it that's a nutty shotgun oh my display an electromagnetic overlay of hostile enemies. yeah it looks like you just have a you have a ping system like outrider was in the black ops games where you can see through walls and stuff and it's going to recharge hopefully that doesn't recharge as fast as some of the other abilities or that's going to also be frustrating as well revive alleys yeah let me see this how rapid restores armor as well he has armor and then he calls in a loadout crate i think this drops in from the sky if i remember right yeah and then this is also uh i believe this is the is this the discarded map no this is the other side of renewal uh there's the solar farms yeah yeah there's the green side it's the other side of renewal that's cool man the maps the maps look so good and uh yeah the specialist i don't know man a lot of people are going to be frustrated with them i think dying to them but i just implore you guys to keep an open mind this might play really well i'm hoping it does and uh, we'll get into it we'll learn about them on this channel and uh in battlefield university we're going to get come up with the best ways to play these and have the most fun and get better at the game together so anyway guys something that i would argue might be more important let's go ahead and look at the beta information and go through that real quick all right guys let's go ahead and take a look at the battlefield briefing everything they learned about the beta this is stuff that they're working on this is stuff that they learned there's a few things in here that are missing that i'm a little nervous about one thing at the end that we're going to talk about that is somewhat alarming and we're just going to go through this together i'm going to try to be as efficient as possible give you guys the high points i'm going to interject just a little bit of opinion and then i want to hear from you guys down below your opinions because i do read every single comment and i really appreciate all of them so let's go ahead and take a look at this first thing is specialists we've already talked about that in the first half of the video specialists aren't going anywhere bravo intel even tweeted that they're doubling down on specialists they're not going anywhere so if you don't like them i'm sorry like i said we're going to try to keep an open mind here um i give kudos to dice for trying to innovate uh, but hopefully these can be uh, balanced in a way that this still feels like Battlefield. So as of now, I'm going to keep an open mind about it. We'll see how it plays. I think adding a lot more specialist in is going to help. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much specialist for now. Um, a lot of this stuff down here that they learned are things that the developers have already said that they're going to be working on. And these are things that we've talked about on this channel already, increasing the number of tanks, uh, the changes to movement, adding a small strafe input to sliding, uh, nearby grenade indicator. We saw that in the first half of this video. Thank goodness we're getting a grenade indicator back, uh, entry and exit animations. We've discussed those elevators and things like that. So there's not a lot of information there, just kind of setting things up. Here's a heat map, uh, that I thought was very interesting. Of course, a lot of stuff was going on around the rockets up on the hill and around these buildings and things like that just a little bit over here on the sea flag i enjoyed fighting over here but there's a heat map that's kind of cool um, i'll definitely leave the link to this in the description so you guys can check it out uh performance this is where they talk about branching where they took a slice out of the game build and set that up for the beta where they took just a little bit out and why the build was old and things like that uh we discussed that ad nauseum on this channel as well so we're not going to look at that too much servers now right here
here they talk about in, in the server performance in the beta. And I don't know if you guys noticed this, but early in the beta, I was getting some ridiculous pings. I was getting placed in the wrong servers. I was having two to 300 ping constantly, consistently. Um, I usually am in the 40 to 60 range is where I'm usually at on, on most first person shooters. That was kind of fixed towards the end. They talk about that. But if you notice in this thing, they talk about matchmaking and I'm not sure if they just left this out and it's kind of understood that we're going to get a server browser, but they don't talk about a server browser at all. And they mention matchmaking and that is a little bit scary. I don't want to see skill based matchmaking in a game like Battlefield team balancing is great. And Battlefield five showed us that we need with with we need enter intra server team balancing is very important. Battlefield five taught us that, but Skill-based matchmaking in Battlefield would be an absolute buzzkill in a casual, fun, arcadey game like Battlefield is. So hopefully that's not what this is. If there is matchmaking, I hope it's ping-based only, and then maybe some within-server uh, team balancing would be fine. But I'm a little, I'm a little nervous that there's no talk of a server browser there. Um, then they talk about the UI. Um, we get the big map back, which is great. Uh, definitely a good thing. We, we figured that was gonna happen, but uh, there's a look at the big map that was not accessible. And then right here, they show us the Comrose that's coming back, which we're gonna find out later is actually gonna be pretty important, but they kind of show uh, how that thing works. Uh, pretty much as you've seen in other games, there's also some more contextual pings um, that are in a separate menu uh, like this. Uh, that can talk about different things and ping and you know since uh you might not have voip with your teammates you can you can ping so that's something that's back it looks pretty nice and we're glad that it's back because it's it's pretty important uh then they talk about the hud there were a lot of changes to the ui which is good a lot of folks weren't that thrilled with the ui and it definitely was it has been worked on quite a bit since then so we can go ahead and take a look at the ui and honestly it looks really good so you guys can see here that we have the we're back we, we have the the event list in the center of the screen uh, show how much damage you did with what vehicle destroyed your XP totals, things like that. Uh, this has been cleaned up over here on the left. Um, so I think this is honestly really good. Uh, it looks quite a bit better with the UI. Yeah, I like that a lot. It looks it looks more like uh, Battlefield 5. Did, they, did that really have bad hit, Reg? Yeah, there was bad hit rage in the trailer. Oh no, there were like two bullets that didn't count. Oh man, they didn't talk about server performance much, and I, I hope I hope they work on that. But you guys can see the HUD changes uh, pretty good. Objective ribbon, they're not near as uh, intrusive as they were on the screen. I think that's really good. Most of most importantly, these things are are quite a bit better uh, than they were. I like the look at that really. I think it looks pretty good. But yeah, that's the UI. So definitely some good changes there. Um, and then team and squad play. They talk a little bit more about that. Fully customizable loadouts, I think, which is important. They talk a little bit about progression right here. And they're saying that, you know, for the first four to six hours of the game, they expect to be working with a reduced array of gadgets. That looks like stuff you're going to have to unlock as you go. Uh, nothing really that new or crazy here. You're going to unlock uh, gadgets and stuff that you can put in that gadget slot on your specialist. Here's a look at the attachment system. Now, this is really important to check out. Um, we've we've kind of wondered, you know, was the plus system it? Thank goodness, no. It looks like there's a lot more attachments that we're gonna be able to use, and this is kind of how you equip them. Uh, you can go ahead and edit your gun, and then so you, you select a slot, and then you edit that slot in the plus system, and here are all the optics that you can pick and put in that slot. So it looks like there's uh, several different kinds of ammo types and things like that you can add to the plus system and uh, to an extent. And you don't even have to make it as big. If you want just a couple of attachments, you don't want three different mags. If some of them aren't very viable, then you don't have to put them on the plus system, which I think is pretty cool. So the plus system is customizable. And uh, it was one of the, even though it was buggy, the concept was one of the bright spots for me of the beta. I really enjoyed the plus system. I think that's going to play out really well and pretty fun. And it's going to add a little bit of a skill gap. If you get if you get good, you learn the keystrokes and muscle memory to work with that plus system quick. I think that's going to be pretty rewarding. So definitely excited about that. Um, then if we look down here, this is the insertion flow. And I think this is going to be really good for hazard zone. Not sure how it's going to work in uh, in all out warfare. It might get a little frustrating. Um, but essentially it's going to show you your squad and their player cards 
and then uh later on it's going to be able to show you what characters they're playing so you guys can kind of talk about and say hey i'll i'll run falc support this time okay i'm gonna run Rao, and like you guys can kind of determine that i think that's going to be great for hazard zone um and then it goes through a little bit of the lore about this about the map and why you're fighting and things like that which is pretty cool I'm also a little bummed we haven't heard about operations and I haven't talked about that very much. Um, I think having this, the lore built into the multiplayer could make operations an amazing story driven game mode. Also multiplayer would be really cool. I'm a little bummed we haven't heard about operations yet because I think there's a ton of potential in this game for operations. But anyway, that's pretty much the insertion. Um, I'm hoping that screen doesn't last too long because if you just wanna hop into a casual game of Conquest, uh, talking to people and setting up your stuff every single time could be a little bit frustrating, but we'll see how that goes. And then the end of round screen here, it looks like you have a best squad screen again. Uh, looks pretty good shows you stats hopefully they're accurate <laughs> hopefully we don't get any could not fetch reports from battlefield 5 and then it shows a guy oh he's got a little one-liner good deal so it shows objectives kills scores top squad nice all right that's pretty cool i guess i hope it just doesn't take too long but yeah no problems with that looks pretty good more things we heard from you. Um, this is where they talk about visibility and it looks like they're going to add lighting to see enemies better. They're also adding new indicators. So if an enemy is inside of 10 meters, they're gonna have a certain indicator. And then also with friendlies are gonna go through walls better. So you're gonna see your friendlies through walls. So when they come around a corner, you're not a surprise and you don't have to determine in a split second if that's a friend or a foe. So I think that's gonna help. Hopefully custom skins and things like that are gonna help. Um, it doesn't look like, and as I feared, there's not a lot of time to work on this problem. They only have a month till launch. And so I don't think we're gonna see much changes in the many changes, excuse me, in the visibility of specialists, unfortunately. Um, they talked about controllers right here, um, about how they're, the key binds were kind of scuffed and you know buttons did multiple things, so they're gonna work on that. It looks like they're changing that. And then here is, this is the craziest thing to me. Um, they said, many of you prefer to use VoIP, which is voice over internet provider. That's basically party chat. And you guys can let me know if I'm misinterpreting this or if you think something different is going on. But they say to keep the line of communication open during gameplay and a heads up that this is presently set to come in after launch. So you're gonna have a battlefield game that is set up to be heavy squad play, team play, and cross-platform with no VoIP. So if you're, a, if you're a solo player or there's just you and a buddy and you wanna go in and play, but you still wanna get that team experience and talk to your randos and try to come up with a plan to, to play the objective, it appears there's going to be no VoIP at launch, which blows my mind in a multiplayer squad-based shooter to not have VoIP at launch is just incredible. And it adds to that narrative that I've been wondering about that crossplay was like a last minute addition to this game. That that blows my mind. Um, then cross platform invite, th that's gonna be there. So you're gonna be able to invite your uh, friends to cross play on different uh, things, on different platforms, but you're not gonna be able to talk to them. So great. You know, that man, that's scuffed in my opinion, if that's actually the case. Um, anyway, guys, that's about all I had for today. Um, another thing they talked about that's important I don't want to leave out is they're working on aim assist strength for controllers. I played on mouse and keyboard, so I didn't notice it very much, but for the controller folks, it looks like they're going to be adjusting that aim assist to help balance out the difference between inputs a little bit, but yeah, a lot of information today, guys. Thanks so much for getting it from me. I know there's a ton of awesome creators that are covering this stuff just as good or better than me. So I appreciate you guys stopping in on my video. Thank you so much. Be a friend, tell a friend, and we'll see you on the next one.